Welcome to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast, where you can learn and be inspired by real-world examples of how technology is transforming businesses and reshaping industries in a language everyone can understand. Here is your host, Neil C. Hughes. Welcome back to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast. How are you all spending your lockdown time out there? I am hearing more and more about the effects that we're seeing on startups and the economy in general at the moment. And I am trying to do all I can to help. Because I always say that technology works best when it brings people together. And I think now more than ever, we need to come together and we need to help small businesses and get them back on their feet. So I'm currently recording like crazy. I have 20 interviews already recorded and scheduled to be released. And I have another 57 booked in until June. And my only problem is, of course, is getting all those conversations out to you all without overwhelming you. But I'm passionate about giving you all a platform to share your stories, challenges and how you're overcoming them so we can actually get through this period together. So if you do notice more than one podcast on on a particular day appear on your podcast feed, that is the reason why I'm doing this. And today I have a great story for you all because on February the 11th this year, data security startup Open Raven launched out of Stealth with a $4.1 million seed funding. It was only several weeks after coming out of Stealth that the world changed. And Open Raven CEO Dave Cole is going to join me on the podcast today to share that story, everything that has happened over the last few months. And we've got so much ground to cover because I did read before I got him on the podcast, he believes that it's not nation state attacks are the biggest cause of data breaches that are crippling organizations. It's simply a lack of good data hygiene. And that's why Dave launched Open Raven out of stealth to help companies course correct by this pressing security issue, especially considering accidental data exposures are now happening in record numbers, such as such as the leaks of 1.2 billion Facebook users and the entire population of Ecuador late last year. It's a great conversation, so I invite you to join me and Dave Cole, CEO of Open Raven, right now. So a massive warm welcome to the show. Can you tell the listeners a little about who you are and what you do? Sure. Thanks for having me, Neil. Um, my name is David Cole. I go by Dave. I've been in the security industry for, gosh, almost 25 years now. I spent 20 of that building products. Um, first product I built was way back in the day, the Foundstone product, where we'd identify the opportunity to turn vulnerability assessment, which um, you know just looked like a tool at the time. It didn't look like an enterprise function and turn that into vulnerability management. Um, from there, I did stints running the Norton product line at Symantec. So I did a little hiatus in the consumer line and recently was chief product officer at CrowdStrike and Tenable. And following all of that, um, my co-founder, Mark Curfee and I uh, decided to try our hands at reinventing the data security market and uh, striking out on our own. And we did that last year with a company called Open Raven. And I'm really excited about learning more about your story and indeed Open Raven and the great work that you're doing there. But before we do, I'd love to actually start with the problem. So can you tell me more about the data hygiene problem that's plaguing the industry at the moment that uh, that you're incredibly passionate about and actually created a solution for? Yeah, you know, there's so many stats here and, and it just sounds like big numbers, but there one, there's one that personally lands with me. And the stat is that every human on the planet will create 1.7 megabytes of information every second. Wow. Yeah, just let that sink in. It's just a massive amount of data. It's an avalanche of data. And further, 99.5% of that goes unused. And that's what people call, you know, oftentimes dark data. And if you think about when, when we talk about big data, there's these, um, we call them the four Vs, velocity, variety, volume, and veracity of data. But if you think about the velocity, which is incredibly fast, the variety of data, which is incredibly diverse, and the volume of data, which is simply overwhelming, they've broken conventional security. You know, the products that were born in the data protection space and even the data hygiene space 10, 20 years ago don't stand a chance of surviving this avalanche of data and certainly, you know, the variety and how fast it's coming and so forth. Um, As a result, People who are responsible for protecting that data are simply overwhelmed. Um, it's because either the, the products were born in a different era when they were fine for that time. 
But the times have changed dramatically, both with cloud, with the internet of things, with really you know, machine learning and data science becoming, data science in particular, becoming normal. All of a sudden, having a separate cloud tool than what you have on premise is really challenging. It's one more thing to deal with. And oftentimes, you know, the tools aren't intended to talk to each other. And yet at the end of it, you have a CISO. You have someone responsible for the security of an organization and they're expected to have a singular security strategy in particular for their data, which is often the crown jewels of the organization. And they're left stitching together a patchwork quilt of old products that really can't even answer basic questions like, where's my data? And I suspect that every business leader listening, wherever they are in the world, will, those words will resonate with them so much. So the, the big question, I'm sure they're all shouting down their earphones at the moment, is but what can companies do to get a better handle on this problem? Our, our belief is that you have to start with the basics, that you have to actually know where your data resides to begin with. And when Mark and I were in the early days of starting the company, we went out and we talked to a bunch of people and they said, you know, part of our problem is the products that are out there presume that I, I know where my data is. And comically, one of them was, was kind of like a spreadsheet. I said, okay, come over here and fill out the locations of all your databases. They're like, wow, if these people ever built a cloud platform or looked inside a modern environment, that's an impossible thing to answer. It's completely unrealistic. So first and foremost, we have to start with the basics. And you know, being a, an old school security person, I've run my fair share of security assessments and pen tests. And, you know, we look at this and say, Let, let's round up and find everything. We can't protect what we don't know. So let's start with the basics and find our data. From there, let's figure out if it's appropriately protected based upon the risk. If it's a lab machine that's not on the internet, it can be treated differently than the crown jewels of the company that's out in our cloud environment that might be a couple steps from the internet itself, or God forbid, sitting on the internet unprotected. Those are very different scenarios. Once you know all of that, you can build rules, you can build policies around it for monitoring and protecting it. And it's our belief that you should be able to do that across your entire organization, independent of whether it sits in the cloud or on premises. Which brings us up to February this year, which just before everywhere, everything went a little bit crazy, Open Raven launched out of stealth with a $4.1 million in seed funding. But can you tell me a little bit more about exactly what Open Raven is, the kind of problems you solve, and your mission to bring this visibility and control to enterprise data protection? Yeah, we had completed our funding round last year, but we felt like the best thing to do is keep our heads down and build something so that when we were ready to talk, people could not only understand what we were doing, but they could touch it and feel that they could play a part in it as well. So along with uh, the announcement right before RSA, before the world tipped upside down, yeah. um, we invited folks to come in and work with us as design partners. Um, there's, there's kind of two things here behind Open Raven. One of them is an ethos and, and what Mark and I saw in the industry. We saw security products that were, um, that it was too hard to get your hands on them. It was too hard to test them. And so many of the products we love, not to mention Zoom, like we're using now, or the products from HashiCorp, or you know any of a number of products, both gave back to open source and there was a level of transparency there, but also there was an ease of use and a presumption that the customer could use those products without having to go through an, a, a time expensive, resource consumptive uh, proof of value where they had their hand, hands held by sales. Why couldn't security be like these so many other markets? We felt that was a failure of the imagination and that was how we wanted to bring what we felt was a really honest, authentic, and product-forward approach to building a security company. And then when we looked at the promise, at the problems themselves, there was no problem that we felt was more profound than the data security problem, where the products were aged, where people couldn't simply even find their data, let alone understand what type of data resided inside data silos and understand how they're protected and start to protect to, uh, to defend them. And we saw it every day as we were looking at the, uh, at the problem, you know, day after day, we'd see another data exposure incident, a data exposure breach that happened as someone found unprotected Elasticsearch, unprotected Mongo, a misconfigured S3 bucket. And we looked at this and said, 
what if we solved this fundamental problem of where's my data and indeed made that free so people knew the product worked, they knew it was for them, they could touch it, they could feel it, they could validate the marketing plans for themselves. And then we allowed them to make movements to prioritize their defenses based upon our understanding of where their crown jewels data or how that data was being protected and operationalize that easy so that they could make simple statements, but big statements about their data at the top level Things such like all of my PII should be defended in this fashion. It, should be, it shouldn't be accessible on the internet. It should be encrypted. It should be backed up and so on and so forth. And it's our job to make that true, whether it sits inside AWS or Microsoft Azure, or whether it sits on premises, or even in the future somewhere inside a SaaS service. And that, that's our intent. It's to dramatically simplify knowing which data you have and where it is and how it's protected. And like you said, since that moment, the world did tip upside down and the work from home mandate created a whole set of other problems that businesses or many businesses weren't prepared for. But so I'm curious, are you noticing a rise in accidental data exposures this year? You know, it, it, it's, it's really a continued drumbeat from what yeah. we've seen in the past. We think, though, that there's going to be a wave that comes after this. We know a lot of organizations, for, for a lot of very good reasons, are rushing through their digital transformation. I heard a joke the other day. They said, who led your digital transformation? Your CIO, your CEO, or COVID-19? <laughs> and, you know... <laughs> It's starting to feel like COVID-19 is going to be one of the uh, one of the most powerful forces behind digital transformation. But what happens, and, and we've heard this continually, is with any transformation, let alone one done in haste, the biggest issue is we can't see what's there. The things we used to have are no longer suitable for creating visibility and allowing me to control it and manage it. And that's particularly true when the infrastructure goes into the hands of developers who oftentimes are incentivized for just getting stuff done and are overworked and aren't incentivized for hygiene. And if they're given tools, they're tools from that other generation before the data avalanche, they're simply unsuited to getting the job done. So, you know, it's, we think there's going to be a whole nother wave that comes after this. And we're hoping to be able to help people out with that, to, to restore that visibility and control for them. And we think having a free entry point having our uh, our community edition where they can touch it and feel it and at least start to see what they have and regain some of that visibility. You know, we think that's going to be the right message at the time when a lot of people are compressed on budget. And as someone that's working right in the heart of this space, I'm kind of curious, do you think that businesses are focusing more on attacks from nation states when the biggest cause of data breaches are crippling organizations is actually just a lack of good old fashioned data hygiene? Is that something that you're seeing? Oh, a absolutely, Neil. We think that, you know, and I've been in the security market long enough to where you see things comes in, come in waves. And right before I went to CrowdStrike, it was incredibly unfashionable to talk about endpoint. And we've just heard people starting to talk about nation state attacks, which previously were kind of like talking about the boogeyman. You know, people just kind of patted you on the head and sent you away. All of a sudden, that became a huge thing. And um, we saw a whole bunch of folks stand up security operation centers and get a focus on threat hunting and so forth, which was very deserved at the time. But having said that, we're in a far better state today, having deployed a whole lot of endpoint detection and response, people learning threat hunting, great managed services out there to help folks, you know, run a security operations center. And now with this massive push into digital transformation and the cloud and all the other things that are happening, hygiene has once again become the most fundamental problem. If you look at all the recent data breaches, you'll notice that the vast majority of them, or at least a considerable percentage of them, are due to the misconfigurations. And this, this was you know, recorded in uh, Verizon's recent data breach investigations report. They showed that it was one of the top causes of data breaches that examined. Uh, I think 21% was the number just due to simple misconfiguration. You know, the job for people to find your data on the internet is just, it's far too easy today. And it's not because people are incompetent. It's not because people aren't well-intentioned. It's because we have just massive amounts more data before, the tools aren't there, things are moving incredibly fast. And with digital transformation, there's org changes too, like the developers stepping into this infrastructure role that we're really, we're grappling with. And uh, it's causing a whole host of problems here that are vastly you know, more, 
uh, important and persistent at this point than worrying about what Vladimir Putin is doing to your infrastructure. <laughs> and I'm curious, was that realization part of the inspiration behind Open Raven, or, or was there another story there? Oh, absolutely. You know, that was that was part of the inspiration. You know, when yeah. having been in the market for a long time, you look at it and you say, okay, where where's the puck going to? Where's the where's the biggest concern that's around the corner? And um, and also where are the tools really the most efficient? Where are people struggling the most? And are there these these needs that people have that they're just starting to express and just starting to understand? And maybe the products there, they're not quite there yet, and it's causing some pain and angst. And that's really, um, that, that, that was through a whole bunch of interviews and talking mm-hmm. to people. And, you know, Neil, you never get it right the first time. <laughs> you know, your, your best tool in that situation is always, you know, two good ears and an open mind. And we got steered into this by talking to security leaders and folks in the market who kept saying, you know, if you did that, then you could, you could do this with my data. And after a while, we're like, okay, you know, we're, we're, we're dumb, but we're not stupid. So it's like, if, if you keep going back to the data and that's your big unexpressed need, let's go there. I <laughs> love it. And there is enough bad news out there without me and you adding to it. So I'd love to end on a more positive note. So what is it that makes you optimistic about the future? It is the best time it has ever been in the history of mankind to build a company and a product. Recession be damned. Um, the amount of services it, you can lean on that help you get a company up and running is unbelievable. It's it's so much easier than before. And the community, that's a, the startup community that's around you, the ability to connect with them through tools like Slack and team, Microsoft Teams and so forth is pretty spectacular. Further, building products today, the things that we can do now quickly that used to take a long time to do is just staggering and that's due to open source and you know advancements and things like machine learning i mean just a a really quick story is when we were building the foundstone product um, one of the big things we had to do is we had to identify an operating system and in order to gather data for that it was incredibly hard we had to partner up with a university nearby we had to scan places that you know at the time maybe was a little on the border of what we should have been doing you know and had to do a whole bunch of research and buy equipment and so forth. It was incredibly difficult to to get that data to do that research. Today, we can do that largely with a single person (laughs) and using Docker Hub and using available open source and using machine learning and so forth and do it better than we could do before. It's just a really incredible time to build products. And that gives us hope for taking on some of these huge challenges like the ones we face right now with um, with data hygiene and data protection. And before I let you go, I feel I've got to mention that you've got your own podcast as well, Security Voices. So what was the inspiration behind that podcast and what kind of covers, what kind of topics do you cover on that podcast? Yeah, so <laughs> unsurprisingly, you know, the, the topics are all security. So yeah. that's, but that's the, um, that's the thin kind of thread um, behind it. The, the, the kind of truth behind it is I'd always wanted to do more with Jack Daniel. Jack Daniel ended up on my team when I was at Tenable. And I always love Jack's perspective. It's very different from mine. He runs, the, he's one of the founders of the B-Sides Conference, which has become a global phenomenon. He has such incredible ties to the community. And um, I just, I always loved our conversations. And Jack and I share a, a real passion for colorful people who have interesting stories. And they're not always the people who end up in the spotlight. You know, sometimes they're people doing just things that are a little offbeat. Um, we just released a podcast with a woman named Brittany Posnikoff, or she goes by straight, who is on the outer edges of social engineering, where she explores um, robots and, you know, how they can be used for human social engineering. Fascinating. And we looked at this and said, what if we did long form, no endorsement interviews, the likes of which you might get on NPR, or you might get in a Tim Ferriss podcast, which you know, I liked quite a bit, the sort of unhurried, dig into these amazing personalities and sometimes timely topics or just really interesting topics and explore them at leisure in the way we wanted to. And uh, that's that was the inspiration behind it. And it's been an incredible amount of fun. It, it really has. And I've met and, and kind of furthered relationships with all sorts of 
people that I otherwise wouldn't have had a chance to talk to and learned a whole bunch of surprising things. So it's been, uh, it's been a lot of fun. Well, I always love to share a lot of stories and a lot of fun with a friend of a similar name called Jack Daniels, but that's a different story. <laughs> <Sorry>. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> can you remind the listeners of where they can find you online, find your podcast, and also contact your team if they've got any questions? Yeah, for sure. So um, you can reach me at uh, LinkedIn, Dave Cole LA, uh, or Dave Cole Open Raven. You'll find me. I'm on Twitter at the rather strange handle of uh, Media Fishy. So that's uh, M E D I A F I S H Y. Security Voices is securityvoices.org, um, spelled just the way it sounds. And our company is uh, www.openraven.com or just openraven.com. Excellent. Well, I'll add all those links to the blog post that will accompany this episode over on my website at techblogwriter.co.uk. And I will be checking out your podcast and rating and reviewing, of course, because that's the currency for podcasters these days. But more than anything, just a big thank you for taking the time to come and join me on this show. I'd love to stay in touch with you. and We'll get you back on a little bit later on the year and learn more how that journey's going. But thanks for joining me today. Thank you, Neil. Appreciate the time. There is so much talk about washing hands and good hygiene at the moment, but I cannot thank Dave enough for coming on and talking about the data hygiene problem. And I loved hearing about how it's actually plaguing the industries, and, but understanding what companies can do to, to get a better handle on it all. So if you have any comments on the world of data hygiene, cyber hygiene, or indeed anything at all, let me know by emailing me, techblogwriter at outlook.com. My website is techblogwriter.co.uk, and my new book, Great TED Talks Innovation, is also available on Amazon. But that's it for today, so a big thank you for joining me as always. Hopefully you'll join me again tomorrow. We'll keep sharing these stories, keep helping each other because technology works best when it brings people together. So thanks for listening. And until next time, don't be a stranger. Thank you for listening to the Tech Talks Daily Podcast with Neil C. Hughes. Remember, technology works best when it brings people together.